Welcome to the Phoenix Beacon Light Seventh-day Adventist Church, where we seek to be one in Christ, one in love, and one in ministry. My name is Hamilton J. Williams, and God has honored me in allowing me to serve as the senior pastor of this group of believers. We feel confident that as you worship here with us, you would experience sound Bible teaching, the dynamic preaching of the Word of God, all in a context of great fellowship. May God bless you as you worship with us today. Praise God. Because we're still here. Thank you. Thank you for, for that message. I'm ready to go home after that. <laughs> Happy Sabbath, church. I'm Pastor Manny Cruz, and I'm excited to be at Beacon Light Church once again. For those of you who don't know who I am, and also for those of you that don't care who I am, it's all right. I'm still going to tell you. I am the husband of one wife, like the Bible says. I am married to the Adventist Halle Berry. That's what I call her. Been married for 28 years. And I have four daughters. My youngest daughter, Soleil, is here, right on cue, walked in just like we rehearsed, very good. So I have four beautiful daughters, and, and I know you guys are looking at me and wondering, you know, where's he from? He looks French, he looks Italian, I'm Mexican, just so you all know. So uh, my wife and I, we have four uh, Blacksicans. And it's good to be in the house of the Lord. I serve the Arizona Conference as the Youth and Children's Ministries Director. And, and we have 108 churches, congregations, and groups in the state of Arizona. And my job is to offer support, resources, to our churches in the area of youth and children's ministries. I spent a, a few moments with the youth this morning, and I have to tell you, um, they're a, a great bunch of, of students. I enjoyed my time there. I, I challenged them, so if you all remember the challenge I gave you guys, um, I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preach a sermon titled, People Are Like Tacos. And if, if one of you comes to me after the sermon and tells me how, my, how many times I said the word tacos, I'm going to give you a, a special gift. Um, it may be tacos, you never know. So, <laughs> But I want to thank uh, Pastor Hamilton Williams for the invitation. Um, I enjoy coming to Beacon Light. Um, it's good to be here, and, and I bring greetings from Arizona Conference President Elder Ed Keyes and our administration there, Elder Ray Navarro and Reggie Leach, and um, would you guys like to send greetings back to the conference office people there? Okay, most of you, that's all right. So this morning... I want to share a message titled, uh, People Are Like Tacos. Now, I'm going to talk about one of my favorite things to talk about, which is food. <laughs> and anyone that knows me knows that I love tacos. I just love tacos. I don't know why. <laughs> I just love tacos. And I am willing to say that 
I may even have a taco addiction. Last year, I looked over at my wife one morning and I said, you know, honey, after 27 years of marriage, I think I love you more than tacos. And she had a little tear in her eye because she knows how much I love tacos. Now, my favorite tacos are the carne asada tacos. Okay? And, and I'm a simple guy. I like just the tortilla with the meat, some onion, cilantro, a little bit of guac, guacamole, just a little bit of guacamole, and salsa. That's it. Nothing else. And, and those of you that know, you know, you, you, you grab that taco, right? You pick it up, four fingers only, pinky always goes up, <laughs> pinky goes up. You bite into that taco. Mm, and then you lick the juice of the salsa. That always, you, that's how you know it's a good taco. When that salsa starts running down your, your forearm there. Any, anybody here know what I'm talking about? Now, Jesus said... In John 13, 35. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. Now, please notice that Jesus did not say, by this, everyone will know that you are my followers if you Keep the Sabbath. Now, I'm not saying that keeping the Sabbath is not important. I keep the Sabbath. I love the Sabbath. You know, I've been blessed with a beautiful wife, a, a, a God-fearing wife, a praying wife. And I remember when, when our girls were, were little, um, my oldest is 27 my youngest is 20. She'll be 21 next month. But when they were little, I learned so much about the Sabbath from my wife and from my daughters. I remember my wife had this box with some dolls and other toys. And, and the girls would say, Mommy, Mommy, can we play with, with those dolls or those toys And my my wife would say, no, those are Sabbath toys. You see, sometimes we make the Sabbath a burden. And, and, and Sabbath should be a delight. I once heard a preacher say, if you're not enjoying the Sabbath... You're not keeping it right. So, so it's not that the Sabbath isn't important, but, but Jesus did not say, by this, they will know that you're my followers if you keep the Sabbath. He, he didn't say, by this, they will know if you're my followers if you keep the commandments or if, if you do this or that. No, he, he said, if you love one another. Jesus is talking to the church right here. He's speaking to us here at Beacon Light. And, and it's a very interesting concept if you think about it. And as I thought about this, I've come to the conclusion that people are like tacos. And if you allow me about 20 minutes or so, we're going to look at the different types of tacos. First, you have the cold taco. 
There is nothing worse than a cold taco. The taste is, is the same, but nobody likes a cold taco. The ingredients are the same, but nobody likes a cold taco. You know, there are people in the church that are cold. They come to church week after week, but they rarely talk to anyone. These people usually leave as soon as the service ends. Sometimes they'll even slip out the back door before the last hymn is done. If you greet them, they may give you a, a head nod, but rarely a happy Sabbath. Then we have the hot taco. Now, this isn't the spicy taco. This is the hot, the, the hot taco is the one that, that burns your mouth when you bite into it. It's like hot. Oh, it burns because it's, it's too hot. The tortilla or the meat are just way too hot. You have to give it a moment to cool down. These are the people in the church that seem to be angry all the time. They have what we call a hot temper. I know there are none of those people here, Beacon Light. Amen. Then we have the best taco in the world. You may have seen an, an advertisement or a sign that read, World's Best Tacos. Many food places claim to have the best tacos in the world. These are the people that think they are better than everyone else. They act like they are better than everyone. Next you have the spicy taco. These are the tacos that when you, when you bite into them, your mouth begins to feel like it's burning. Last night, uh, we were up at Camp Yava Pines. Uh, there's a Hispanic youth weekend going up there, and I, and I went to, to, to visit with him. And, and a friend of ours with, with, with my wife and I, and uh, he is Dominican, okay? And he doesn't eat anything spicy. So on the way back down, um, he said, hey, Pastor Manny, when we get to your house, because he's staying with us, and uh, some of you may have heard of him. He's Wild Man Dan. Any adventures or pathfinders here? Wild Man Dan, he does all the reptiles and the snakes. Well, anyway, he's doing a, a children's Sabbath at Camelback today. But last night, um, he said, hey, Pastor Manny, when we get to your house, um, is it okay if I drive out and get something to eat? And I said, no. I said, we're actually going to stop right now and get some. <laughs> so we stopped. My wife said she wanted um, Mexican, so we did a drive through one of those um, Berdos, you know, Filibertos, Adalbertos, Rigobertos. Uh, some, of those are, some of those are made up. They're not really Mexican names, okay? I don't know who made them up. But anyway, so we, 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 we ordered, and, and he ordered some burrito, and poor guy... It was so spicy that I could hear him, like, jumping up in his seat in the back, like, oh, oh, oh. And I said, hey, man, you got, you got water back there? He's like, I got, I got water, but it's good. It's really good. And I said, you don't have to eat it. I go, I can stop and get you something else. He's like, oh, no, oh, oh, it's so good. And I'm, I'm, I'm laughing inside. I said, man, you're just too proud, too proud. But the spicy taco is the one that burns and, 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 and your tongue is on fire and, and your whole mouth is on fire. You can't really enjoy them because you have to be drinking water or, or something cold when you eat them. They, they even make you sweat. 
Now, my father says that I'm not a real Mexican because I like salsa, I like spicy food, but I'm not a masochist. I don't like suffering. I like salsa that, that is flavorful. It, it's, it's salsa to give it a little taste. Maybe a little, a tiny little zing. You know, you know what I'm saying? Just, just enough to, to give it taste and, and, and to get your taste buds you know, going. But I don't like to suffer. My father, on the other hand, he'll take the big jalapeno peppers or any kind of pepper and he'll grab it and he's like, mmm, Mexican candy. <laughs> and he'll bite into it. <clears throat> and he always likes to eat and, and have a, a roll of tissue right next to him on the table because he's blowing his nose between bites and he's sweating. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, how in the world are you enjoying that food? And he says, oh, delicioso. I'm like, uh-uh, not me. These tacos are like the people in church who are unpleasant to be around. They complain about everything and criticize everyone. Nobody wants to be around them because they tend to be very negative. Look to the person next to you and say, I'm not that person. <laughs> Praise God, we don't have any of those people here at Beacon Light. Amen. Next we have the bland taco. This is the taco that has little to no flavor. These are the people who only attend church, but don't participate or support anything the church does. They are the pew warmers. They don't commit to anything. I've had my fair share of, of bland tacos because I love tacos and I'll never turn down a taco. And believe me, they're, they're not good at all. And sometimes you bite into a bland taco and you just want to kind of like spit it out into the napkin, you know, no. Now the last second to the last kind of taco is the genuine taco. This is my favorite taco. The tortilla is handmade. It is just warm enough. The salsa is not too spicy. It has the perfect amount of cilantro and onion. The guacamole is tasty. And the meat is tender and juicy. Now, before you, you, you continue judging me, okay, up to this point, I have never mentioned that these tacos that I'm talking about are vegetarian. <laughs> repent. <laughs> repent. <laughs> I forgive you. Because you vegans were already looking at me like, how dare he stand up there? I make some killer vegetarian tacos. You can ask Soleil right here. When my daughters come home, when they come visit, like, Dad, can you please make some tacos? Now, I have to confess, I am not a vegetarian. <laughs> Pray for me. By the way, this is not in my notes, but I'm just going to give it to you guys. This is going to be free, okay? 
BJ, I'm not going to charge you for this. This is going to be free. It's not in my notes. But um, I ask vegans, please forgive me for what I'm about to say, but I, I just had to. Do you know how you can tell a vegan? You know how you can tell if somebody's vegan? Just wait. They'll tell you. The genuine taco. It is exactly what a taco should be. You can usually find these tacos in a hole-in-the-wall type establishment. Nothing extravagant, nothing sophisticated, nothing fancy. It can even be a food truck on some street corner. These are the people in the church who are sincere and transparent. They are humble. They are not sophisticated. They are not extravagant. They simply love Jesus and they love people. They are the real deal. Even though I have my favorite kind of tacos... I will never turn down or reject tacos. I'm always down to eat some tacos. Why? Because I love tacos. I think I need to do the same with people. You know, it's easy to hang out with your favorite kinds of people. It's easy to, to visit with those that, that you agree with. It's easy to, to invite those who you like. But Jesus has said, by this, this is the characteristic this is how others, people that are unchurched, people that don't know Jesus, this is how they will know if you are my followers, if you love each other, if you truly love one another. And see, as I think about this, I, I realize that I love tacos so much that, that I don't reject any taco. I, 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 I'll take any taco. And, and I need to do the same with people. I need to be able to love all people. I need to be able to accept all people. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something here that, that I'm not proud of. But, but when the pandemic began, for some reason, this whole mask wearing thing became a political issue. And, and our country became more divided over a piece of cloth. And I got caught up in it. Because when I went to a particular church, I would look at people that refused to put on a mask and I would judge them and, and think things in my mind. And, and, and it got to a point where, where I began to, to, to foster these, these emotions and feelings in my heart. And, and I remember one day, I was reading my devotional book, and, and you know, God, God speaks to us. And, and in that devotional that morning, it talked about loving those you disagree with. And, and I thought about how I was feeling towards people in the church simply because they disagreed with me. You know, I want to add... To, to this statement 
in regards to love. If, if by the way we treat each other in the church, people outside of the church are going to know if we are Jesus' followers. I'm willing to say that by the way we treat each other in the church is a way for people to leave the church also. Loving others is impossible. It's impossible. We can't not do that. Only if Jesus is in our life. This is an area where Philippians 4, 13 is applicable. God, my brother right here, I can't stand them. God, my sister right here, ugh, she gets on my last nerve. And God says, love them. Love them. God, how? Paul said it. I can do all things through Christ. I can do all things through Christ. When my daughters were growing up, my wife and I taught them to never use the word hate when referring to people. You can use that word when you are referring to things. I hate broccoli. That's all right. I hate it too. You can use that word when referring to things. But never use that word when referring to people. As followers of Jesus, we are called to love. Now, there's another type of taco that I have to talk about. And that's a toxic taco. The poisonous taco. And I'm just going to say it. I mean, we know what a poison taco can do to us, right? Well, these are the people in the church that are toxic. And we have to establish boundaries. Just because Jesus calls us to love everyone, it does not mean that we need to make that person my best friend. There are people in the church, and I know I'm, I know I'm not talking to anyone here because there are no toxic people here at Beacon Light, so it's okay for me to, to say this. But you need to establish boundaries in your life. You cannot allow, as a follower of Jesus, you cannot allow and should not allow toxic people to influence your life. Toxic people can be extremely stressful and can affect your relationship with God. It can, they can affect your spiritual life. They can affect your, your family life. So establish boundaries. Pray for them. Pray with them. But make sure that you have some boundaries. Okay? Mandy Hale, New York Times bestselling author, wrote, love people who hate you. Pray for people who have wronged you. It won't just change their life. It'll change yours. Now, I believe she was quoting Jesus. And how many of you guys are familiar with Gary Chapman and the five love languages? Okay. So, as I close... I want to share my five love languages with you. And for some reason, the slide is a little bit cut off. But um, <laughs> these are the five love languages according to Pastor Manny. Okay? You guys ready? Okay. 
Words of affirmation. Your tacos are delicious. Acts of service. I made you tacos. Receiving gifts. Here's a taco. <laughs> Quality time. Let's go out for tacos together. <laughs> and physical touch. Let me hold you like a taco. Imagine, imagine what the church would look like if we truly loved one another. Jesus knew that the enemy would divide us. He knew that Satan would use anything and everything to bring division, even a mask. So today, as I close, I want to challenge each and every one of us to love one another. And I'm going to give you one simple way that we can love one another. Because in order for us to truly love each other, we need to get to know each other. There was an individual at a church that I attend who was very political during the whole pandemic. Anti-masker, anti-vaccine, you know, um, very supportive of, of the current president at the time. And, and he would say stuff from the pulpit that was sometimes even offensive. And this was during the time where I was having these feelings and emotions and I wanted to punch some people, you know what I'm saying? So I did something that I felt God was telling me to do. I invited him out to lunch. And you know, um, what do you think? As a matter of fact, yes. Not, not kidding around, I invited him for some tacos. And as we sat there and, and talked, um, I had prayed a lot. I had prayed a lot. And I, and I said, God, help me not to get caught up. Help me not to, to engage in, in, in the argument. But as, as we were visiting with one another, I asked him questions about his life, about his marriage, about his children. And, and, and you know, I, I learned that he had had a very difficult childhood and, 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 and he dealt with some issues, um, addictions, etc. And, and I, I started to see him differently as he's talking to me. He's sitting right in front of me and he's, he's telling me about his life and as I'm asking him questions, I didn't see this, this radical you know, politically charged individual, I didn't see that. I, I, I saw a man with issues and challenges and problems just like me. And I was reminded about a truth that sometimes we forget in the church. And this is that the, the one thing we all have in common the one thing that we all have in common is pain. Pain. All of us have dealt with pain. All of us deal with pain, whether it's emotional pain, physical pain. And that's why, sister, your song, I'm still here. Thank you. The one thing we all have in common is, is pain. And as I sat there eating my taco, I, I saw a man just like me. And I have to tell you, 
God continues to remind me that I need to love everyone. So today I, I challenge each one of you, love one another. And, and I want to invite you to do something. Start inviting people to eat. The people you like, the people you dislike, just, just everyone. Just start inviting people and share a meal with them. There's something about sitting down with some food. There's something about sharing a meal with someone. There, there's something about humans, you know, sharing a, a meal. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it makes us vulnerable. I, I don't know if there are any studies that have been done on this. All I know is that when we get to know people, we begin to understand and we are, and we are reminded that we are all in this journey together. So invite people to lunch. Invite someone to your home for a meal. You know, you can even invite them over for some tacos. <laughs> By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. I'm going to invite the church to please stand as we close with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you for loving us the way you do. You not only tell us that you love us, you, you show it every moment of our lives. God, you invite us into your presence. You're constantly reaching out to us because ultimately you want to save us. And God, as part of your plan of salvation, you have required us to love one another. God, there's no way that we can love you unless we love our brother and our sister. And God, we recognize that we can't do it. It's impossible for us to love everyone because some people are easy to love, but others, God, are, are, are difficult to love. So today, right here, right now, we ask in Jesus' name that your Holy Spirit will descend upon this church that your spirit will come into our hearts and into our lives in such a way that we may be willing to invite others into our homes to share a meal. And as we get to know them, may your Holy Spirit touch our hearts that we may love them, that we may love one another so that others may come saying, I want to be part of this church. I see the way you all treat each other. I want to be a part of that. God, thank you. Thank you for loving us. We love you too. And we want Jesus to come soon. Until he does, keep us faithful. For we pray and ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have a wonderful Sabbath. God bless each and every one of you.